Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. And presiding at this Mass is Father Walter Tukuski with Deacon Tim Springer preaching. Our opening song is found in the hymnal number 919, Gather Your People, number 919. Please rise. Welcome to the solemnity of the most precious body and blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us ask our loving Father for pardon, forgiveness, and strength. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the food that never leaves us wanting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, as to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God, most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Abram then gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks. revelation to my Lord. Sit at my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord from Zion, your 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Please remain seated for the sequence.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fishes are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all of these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the solemn feast of Corpus Christi, or the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and also Father's Day. May the body and blood of Christ strengthen you, and may you have a wonderful Father's Day. A teenager had just gotten his driver's license. He asked his father, who was a minister, if they could discuss his use of the car. His father took him to his study and said to him, I'll make a deal with you, son. You bring your grades up, study your Bible a little, and get your hair cut, and we'll talk about it. After about a month, the boy came back and again asked his father if they could discuss the use of the car. They again went to the father's study where his father said, son, I'm really proud of you. You brought your grades up, and you studied your Bible diligently, but you didn't get your hair cut. The young man waited a moment and replied. He said, you know, Dad, I've been thinking about this. You know, Samson had long hair, Moses had long hair, Noah had long hair, and even Jesus had long hair. To which his father replied, you're right, son, and they also walked everywhere they went. <laughs> My father was a Southern Baptist who converted to the Catholic faith. He knew the heavy responsibility of providing for a large family of eight. At times, he worked multiple jobs just to pay the bills, to put food on the table, and keep a roof over our head. When I was 10 years old in fifth grade, there was a mother and two sons who lived just four doors down the block from us who were evicted from their house. All their belongings, clothing, and furniture were thrown out to the curb. To add insult to injury, it started to rain that evening, and most of all of their possessions were ruined. When my dad came home from work, he noticed what was going on, and without hesitation, he spoke to the mom and invited them into our home to get out of the rain. They ended up staying with our family for at least nine months until the mom could get on her feet financially. As a child, I was proud of my dad for showing such compassion for this family, even while he was working very hard to keep our family afloat. But as an adult and as a father, I appreciate all the more the sacrifice he made and the example he gave of living his faith. Being a father, especially in this day and age, is a tremendous responsibility. A man was interviewed on the news the other day about what it takes to be a good father. The first thing he said was, 
it takes a lot of praying. As fathers and men of faith, we must rely on the grace of God to guide us in making the right decisions for our children and our family. Today, we offer our prayers for all the fathers that they will continue to be examples of God's love for their children. And we also pray for those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly de delight in the children when they are born. And let us pray for those fathers who have died but live on in our memory and whose example and love continue to nurture us. Today, we also celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. We come together at the table of the Lord as a community of faith to witness to the great love our Lord Jesus Christ has for us. The multiplication of the loaves and the fishes in Luke's gospel as a reflection of our Eucharistic event that we share. We are here because of an act of divine love and self-giving. God has set the table for us, and we do the same in loving service when we serve one another. The Feast of Corpus Christi reminds us that Jesus has come among us. He has died and he has risen. Jesus is truly present with us. And in a few moments, we will proclaim just that as God feeds us with his body and blood, which is of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we receive the Lord, let us remember that we are called to bring his love and hope to the world around us. And how do we feed one another after, after we have fed on the Lamb of God? We set the table for the poor, the outcast, the lonely. This is our Christian mission. It reminds us of why we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi in the first place. This past May, it was my great honor and privilege to give my granddaughter and other second graders their first Holy Communion. The anticipation and excitement for them was almost tangible as they waited to come forward to receive Jesus Christ in the Eucharist for the very first time. A few weeks later, I was invited to St. John of the Cross School to bless religious articles that they had received as First Communion gifts. While there, I asked the class how many children had received their Second Holy Communion. Many of them raised their hands to express their joy and excitement in receiving Jesus again in the Eucharist. It was such a wonderful event. One little boy proudly proclaimed, I have received five, five First Holy Communions. Today, as we come forward to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, may our hearts be filled with that same joy and excitement which we felt on the day of our first Holy Communion.
Those who listen to Jesus receive all the food they could eat. Having listened to his word, let us pray for the needs of all who hunger for a better life. <clears throat> for the church, the body of Christ, that we may share the abundance of blessings we have received from the Lord so that all of humanity may be satisfied by the Lord's generosity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our public officials and politicians, that they may find ways to treat immigrants, refugees, and those at the margins of society with justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers and those who have shown us the Father's love, that God may make them beacons of light, sources of encouragement, and grant them peace and health, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the teens and adults traveling to Michigan for the youth mission, that they may be filled with God's grace, open to the Spirit's work as they reach out in service and return safely home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the parishioners of St. John of the Cross and all of our sharing parishes, that we may profess in word and deed what we receive in the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the sick, especially Mary Lichtenauer, Sharon Cuvay, and for those listed in our bulletin, that they may find comfort in the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, especially Scott Kube, husband of Gretchen Nitsch, son of Robert and Sharon, brother of Christopher, Kathy Greenan, mother of AJ and Susan, grandmother of Dominique, Alexander, Harry, and Connor, Joseph Mahoney, husband of Rene, father of Mason, that they may rest in eternally in God's loving arms, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those we remember at this Mass, especially Celine Wojcik, Hale McReynolds, and Martin McDonald, and all those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who Son provided food and all of our wickedness, give God the answer to all our wants through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 613, Hidden Here Before Me, number 613. Three. Hidden here before me, Lord, I worship you. Hidden in these symbols, yet completely true. Lord, my soul. Long 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his disciples, established for the ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that both in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and enter willingly into his passion. He, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the face, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John of the Cross, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace to the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I join in singing number 1011 draw near number 1011 Take the body of your 
while we all will be blessing our fathers, I ask them to stand up for the blessing all of us. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless all fathers, especially those present here today. May they be strengthened in their vocation to fatherhood. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Inspire them with the holy wisdom as they accompany us on our journey of faith. In gratitude for their encouragement, protection, and perseverance, grant that we may honor them always with a spirit of profound love. Amen. All God's blessings upon you. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by the reception of your precious body and blood, who reign and live forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace and the love of Christ, giving God the glory by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And please join in singing number 1018, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 1018. 